I <coughs> wish to thank the Woodrow Wilson Center for the opportunity to be here to, to present to you some brief comments about Brazil. I wish to, to <coughs> thank uh, Ambassador Harrington for his presentation. It's an honor to be presented by you, Ms. Ambassador. I wish also to greet uh, Dr. Werner and Paulo Sotero, our ambassadors, Mauro and Paulo, and my colleagues from the NDS that are with me and you all here. Thank you for coming. I, I'll try to be uh, fast and uh, leave time for questions because it's always better to, to take questions and interact. Um, we, um, we have a, uh, in spite of uh, global uh, slow growth, uh, we have a relatively bright perspective for Brazil. <coughs> uh, Brazil, I will go through these you know, br uh, agenda and uh, talk a little about BNDS at the end and uh, put forward some of the challenges for Brazil in the future. Brazil, uh, we are in a different world today in which uh, developing economies are leading global growth. Uh, and um, uh, if we look at the statistics of uh, all international uh, institutions, you will see that uh, there is a decoupling of uh, growth trends. Uh, I'm not talking about a decoupling of, of current business cycle, short-term cycle, in which the global economy reacts jointly. But if you look to, to trends, to growth trends, you will see that there is a differential of three to four percentage points in growth rates by leading uh, developing economies and the projected into the future as far as we can see in next 15 years, 20 years maybe, this will redesign the world economic geography. No, there is strong growth in Asia strong growth in Africa, in s although in Africa the growth is very heterogeneous, and strong growth also in Latin America. And in Latin America, Brazil uh, I is a leading growing economy, and w which was able to overcome the crisis uh, in a relatively fast way, being an open, financially open economy, differently from Asian economy. Brazil is an open economy to financial and credit flows. Uh, the impact of the crisis through the credit channel was uh, quite strong in the beginning, but it lasted only uh, uh, two quarters. Brazil was able to overcome the crisis very fast. Um, we have also a new important trend um, in this scenario, which is climate change, the uh, strengths and impacts of climate change represent a global challenge. So the world is changing, the world ge economic geography is changing, and climate change is also a important trend that we have to face up to it, so it, it is. One third important uh, ingredient of this scenario is competition. <coughs> competition is uh, fierce and, uh, and um, there is no sign that competition is, will be more uh, uh, s stronger rather than on contrary wise. And uh, of course there is uh, protection pressures on the other side, but it is a reality of the a global economy much much heavier integrated than the global economy before, so we have more competition. We have also more innovation and technical progress. It is, uh, if you're familiar with the so-called Moore Law, um, 
it is incredible that uh, information, the potential for information technology to pack, process, and store information in ever growing uh, exponential uh, 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 trend, it, it is yet on, and it's not clear that it will taper off. So it is. Uh, the strength and the power of scientific instruments for the advancement of science, nanotechnology, biotechnology, the strength of innovation is growing in most probably crisis and new uh, challenges will make innovation even more uh, powerful in coming years. And another new trend is uh, uh, um, the um, recognition that public policy, state action matters uh, to a large extent in performance. So those are uh, a brief uh, comment on new global trends. Brazil has uh, important assets in, in this scenario. First, the, common, the Brazilian society has conquered institutional and political stability. We now have a presidential election, zero political risk. Whatever the result, no worry about uh, the future of uh, Brazilian <coughs> macroeconomic policy or other institutional for kinds of forms of risk. Brazil is a, a, a society in a, a uh, we in which uh, the uh, maturation of democracy and of, of institutional building of solid uh, and reliable uh, institution and uh, based on, on legal principles are uh, uh, ever in improving and not uh, contrary wise. We have a sound economic policy that has been a, a, um, a, a building up also of lessons from the past. We had very high inflation, high social costs. The lesson that inflation is no good for no one, particularly for the poor, is a very well learned lesson. And uh, care about inflation, long term stability, <coughs> uh, of course, also fiscal uh, strength are basics for Brazil, if not in dispute uh, that those are uh, basic fundamentals for the future. And in, in addition to that, Brazil has now a strong foreign exchange position, uh, a cushion of reserves that has to be kept uh, to help cushion the economy uh, in face of uh, external or financial shocks and so forth. And Brazil is able also to keep a complex and diversified manufacturing services and also a powerful agribusiness sector. So we have a diversified economic base in Brazil. On the other hand, we have many challenges. One is obvious, need for, inf for infrastructure. We have a tremendous need for more infrastructure. <coughs> and this is, of course, uh, I will not go uh, more into that because it's obvious. We, we underinvested in for more than 20 years and have bottlenecks that, uh, bottlenecks that create uh, negative externalities for the competitiveness of Brazil. And uh, if uh, uh, investment in infrastructure in Brazil has repressed pent up demand that um, makes no almost zero demand risk. We have repressed demand. So risk of demand is very low, then that make the, the uh, projects very attractive in terms of rates of return. So we have a frontier of investment in those areas. We need more innovation. Brazil has a private sector in uh, manufacturing system and, serv and, and services also, which has a obvious fragility of investing uh, not in a, not in a higher, in a sufficient scale in innovation and it's not as broad as we need to have involvement of, uh, of our 
entrepreneurial base in innovation, and not that, that not just mean R&D, but our innovation uh, led to sensu, which mean uh, um, a, a, a challenge for us to, to have our, 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 uh, our firms and our entrepreneurial system uh, moved to moving to, towards in more innovation, to m is in making innovation a part of its essential business strategy, making it a, a inherent uh, uh, dimension of its uh, uh, business strategy. And two other important uh, uh, social uh, challenges. One is to keep on, on the trend that has been initiated, but strengthened, particularly by Lula's presidency, under Lula's presidency, of economic inclusion, of improving income distribution, improving the size of a Brazilian domestic and potential Brazilian domestic market, and in that, a, uh, another, and not just doing so through the transfer, transfer payments for poor people, which is something uh, meritory, but increasing the, in sustaining the formalization of the Brazilian economy by increasing the f uh, f creation of, of jobs, or formal creation of jobs protected by the social security network, et cetera. So those, because this high, that these mean high quality jobs, these mean also uh, that carries with in, in, in itself an, another uh, uh, benign effects to 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 uh, tax b uh, uh, revenues and also for the social security system. So th those are important challenges for the future, which I would wish to stress in this afternoon. I will show here very clearly how in 2009 uh, the domestic demand was the main. Uh, a contributor to sustaining the growth of the Brazilian economy. This is uh, by quarters, and we see here uh, that domestic demand will grow um, uh, in a very important way this, uh, this year. Uh, um, we can now envisage a um, average growth for the future around 5%. It could be more if we be able to invest more than 5%. Uh, the 6.5 in 2000 this year has been revised recently. This is official Ministry of Finance figures. It's been revised to seven or somewhat above seven because of the first quarter was very strong but the economy has already accommodated to a, to a, a growth uh, much lower and more consistent with keeping inflation under control and having uh, a sustainable path into the, for the future. So we expect growth to, to oscillate around 5% in uh, wishing that it could do even better if we do save and invest more. Uh, Talking about investment, this is an interesting forecast. This is a forecast based on BNDS uh, radar. BNDS is the main provider of credit for investment in Brazil, and because <coughs> of that, almost all business consult with BNDS for its investment plans. So BNDS is, uh, is a privileged ob observation of investment plans. And we uh, now, each six months, we do a panoramic uh, overview of investment. And what we see into the future that we were growing, uh, this is the aggregate uh, investment to GDP ratio, which was too low. We were in, uh, growing towards 20% before the crisis. Uh, but the crisis hit us just in the last quarter of 2008. Investment ratio declined. It could have declined even more. It declined to 16.8. If we're not by countercyclical uh, measures that were taken, 
uh, the decline on investment should have gone even deeper uh, and the setback would have been uh, worse. But uh, we resisted it, we helped, uh, as BNDS was a, was a key actor in resisting the fall of investment. And we were able to revert. And now investment is expanding strongly and we wish to keep, we wish to reach 19% of overall savings to GDP this year, and we wish to go towards 22, 23%. Then on this projection here is based on actual investment plans, and we are being very, care we're being very careful in not uh, accounting for plans that are not, uh, are not really solid, so we are, we are purging from our statistics anything. I wish to be very realistic. That's, that's what I s say to my research team. I want realistic data about investment plans, and that is the forecast based on investment plans pr uh, uh, presented to us. I think that the real performance will be better than this. You know? We can reach a higher percentage of aggregate savings in investment to GDP higher than these, earlier than these, uh, because of course we, don't, we do not capture investment by small firms that don't go directly to the NDS, or investment by households, investment in construction, housing, other forms of investment that we, not, we don't have a direct uh, uh, observation of that. So this is mainly investment in infrastructure, industry services and so forth. Um, for housing, we rely on Caixa Econômica, which is another federal bank. And this is observed, the column, first column, so observed between 2005, 2008, was real investment. So uh, in, uh, I, you notice that the, the year 2009 is not there because 2009 uh, investment was, was uh, uh, down, fell. Mm -hmm. So if I put that in the data, it would, it would uh, distort the comparison. So I'm comparison, comparing five very good years in Brazil, 2005, to the plans that we have in our portfolio right now between 2010 and 2013 and this <coughs> implicit growth rate per year is 9.1%, so which is more uh, around the double of the growth projected. So we expect that this could be better. Uh, if we break it down, we will see, uh, for instance, that the oil and gas sector, for instance, obvious sector in which investment activity is very, very strong. So for instance, Petrobras alone has the largest capital expenditure program in the planet compared to its other major oil companies. It's $45 billion per year in, uh, uh, for Petrobras. So that's an uh, important, very important driver of investment. It's not the only driver of investment. Brazil has many other spontaneous, very strong drivers of investment. I should mention the Brazilian agribusiness sector, which is very competitive and is taking advantage of Asian demand for foodstuffs, for protein, etc. So it's very strong. We have the housing. Uh, Brazil Brazil credit to housing is only 3% of GDP and could triple in four years because uh, there is a housing uh, repressed demand for housing. Uh, there is uh, the whole infrastructure frontier in energy, elect hydroelectricity, other renewable energy, solar, wind power, so forth. That we have a uh, very strong demand for energy. So we have drivers of investment that are very strong and there is no uh, foreseeable force that could counteract that, that strength of investment decisions in those, in those 
uh, uh, areas or sectors uh, for uh, the future. I should, or I could also add other important uh, competitive businesses that are taking advantage of the recovery of the global economy for Brazil. And so, and also um, the strength of our uh, domestic manufacturing as the Brazilian domestic sector is uh, uh, also uh, a very promising, uh, uh, has a perspective of a very promising uh, market for the future. So um, let me talk a bit about uh, the role of uh, the Brazilian, uh, of the state of the Brazilian government in facing the crisis and also in planning for the future. Uh, uh, about the crisis, I, I think we had, um, first of all, we had a very uh, comprehensive and severe regulation for, for which was supposed to be outdated it proved to be a very good one because we had one central bank, one central regulator and supervisor of the whole system and, and the, uh, in, in a very comprehensive way because the Brazilian central bank uh, is able to, to supervise the whole financial and non-financial intermediaries uh, in the same way. So uh, it is, uh, the central bank has acted very fast, provided liquidity in, in beginning of the crisis, and after that, the Ministry of Finance put forward a number of tax uh, exemptions or tax uh, uh, relief to alleviate, uh, uh, and particularly to stimulate consumption of durable goods, automobiles, etc., and many other sectors. And uh, I should note that those incentives have already been removed. Uh, the latest, uh, uh, date for removal was March 31st of this year. And one of the reasons why the economy was so excited in the first quarter of this year was the, there was a deadline for all those incentives and they were removed so people run to, to buy cars, TVs and other stuff and then created a, 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 a mini bubble that uh, it's fortunately over and now we are back to, to cruising speed in terms of, of growth. Uh, of course, there is a, a, down, a downward adjustment. Now our consumption and production is below uh, our, our four and a half to, to five, but it will recover in the second half of this year. So it is adjustment for uh, making up for the very excited first quarter. Now, uh, another important uh, factor in uh, supporting the growth of Brazil was the role of public banks. Uh, public banks supplied credit when the private sector was contracting and particularly at BNGS, we supported investment. And one interesting thing is a more efficient way to, uh, uh, to, push, to put forward a counter cyclical policy is to support public investment, support overall private and public investment through credit and not through current expenditures. Because if you do it through credit, and particularly if you have a reliable bank to do it, you get the return to the treasury. You can lend to the, to the, to the productive sector, get a nice return and have it back. This is qualitatively different from uh, just spending in current uh, and uh, uh, forms again. So the reaction to Brazil, of Brazil, of the Brazilian government, of the Brazilian economy to the crisis was uh, very efficient in this, in this sense that we did not waste a, an important amount of fiscal expenditure. Of course, there is some, there, is, there has to be some fiscal cost, but it was, the fiscal cost was minimized by the way we did it and the fiscal cost is minimized to a way that in which we have our public accounts, our public debt with init initially expanded is already both the gross and the net public debt is declining as a percentage of GDP and there is a, a uh, uh, we are back in 
um, um, producing a primary fiscal surplus enough to make sure that the uh, trajectory of the public indebtedness will be uh, uh, further, we'll see further decline on the ratio of uh, public debt over GDP in the coming months and, and certainly in coming years. Brazil is, it's, it is, it is the only way to do a fast fiscal adjustment when you're growing. When you have an economy growing, it's much easier and in, uh, viable to, uh, to reduce your indebtedness. So sensible macroeconomic policy, this is an important lesson. When you grow, you should reduce public debt as a percent of that. And be prepared, because if you have recessions, you have difficulties, you have room for expanding. So the ideal would be for Brazil to have its public debt, net public debt to GDP going down in direction of 30%, such you even more if you can, um, in order to make room when you need it for to, a, to have a fiscal expansionary policy. So this is an important uh, policy for the future. And we have also reacted in a way uh, of prioritizing investment and not, and in, uh, in BNDS was very important in prioritizing investment as a, uh, a counter-cyclical policy. But in addition to that, uh, we did an effort of coordinating many other initiatives and uh, we uh, pushed forward uh, a science and technology and innovation package through the Ministry of Science and Technology. The productive development policy, which are um, um, industrial policy th through the Ministry of Industry and with BNDS giving its full support. The housing program to poor people, uh, the health program by the Ministry, uh, the so-called My Saudi, More Health, and the education program, and those programs were linked to the big infrastructure program uh, of the uh, PAC initiative. So those programs were very well coordinated. We had many meetings, coordinated meetings, made a tremendous effort to coordinate action uh, across this program. Let me um, let uh, let me speak about. You know, we have also starting to plan for the future. There's a new edition of PAC, PAC-2, uh, which projects for the future more investment in energy, more investment in social infrastructure. By the way, BNDS has in PAC-1 331 projects. So we, we, uh, we uh, gave strong support to PAC uh, particularly for financing the private sector, financing public concessions. Most of our support is through the private side of PAC, which by the way has been, <laughs> for now, almost all of those projects are, on, are, are, are being uh, implemented. Um, uh, let me talk a bit about the, our industrial policy uh, was a prioritary policy. When I took office, President Lula himself asked me to push forward uh, this policy uh, and with a strong partnership with my minister, Minister of Industry and Trade, uh, Minister Miguel Jorge, we designed with our teams, uh, with the Brazilian Agency for, for Development and, and Industry, we, and we, we put together a, a, a effort to uh, focus in innovation in export small businesses and in overall investment capital formation another important point was to have a close relationship and cooperation with the private sector and one interesting thing we are able to make more than 95 percent of the measures operational and with results of course, there's all, always some kinds of measures that face other f uh, legal difficulties or resistance from some, uh, in some way or another, but 95% of efficiency 
in policy implementation was a very good mark. So the policy is comprehensive. The first there is say consolidating and expanding leadership in which Brazil is uh, very competitive and we in fact were able to strengthen the competitive position of Brazil in all those areas either by or supporting the internationalization of Brazilian firms, consolidation of Brazilian uh, competitive and firms with adequate governance and, and high standards of uh, management, uh, professional management. Then there is a mid, uh, very tough challenge of strengthening competitive of a very large number of sectors uh, ranging from the automotive sector to, let's say, uh, um, the toy industry. So, um, uh, supporting the enhancement of competitiveness that uh, uh, required uh, a, a very flexible planning and trying to address with specific initiatives either in the legal, regulatory, or credit side, or tax side, tax treatment for each of those sectors in order to improve their performance. And I wish to also, of course, uh, the knowledge the uh, uh, economy, the new sectors that are uh, the uh, main channels for innovation. In um, many of those sectors, the health complex, information technologies, uh, nanotechnologies, defense, etc. And there is also a number of strategic initiatives. The, those strategic initiatives came from, m m many of them were directed f f f by the president himself. So the involvement of the president was very important. No? As the president, for instance, the president wanted us to focus in efforts towards Africa, for instance. Focus on Africa, because uh, Brazil should uh, partner with Africa and help the development of Africa and create opportunities. Uh, integration of, of Latin America. <coughs> um, the challenge of, uh, of, of developing the less developed regions of Brazil, particularly the northeast of Brazil. And we are, we are a Brazilian government and with support also of BNDS, there is a revolution going on in Northeast Brazil. The infrastructure, new infrastructure, important rail system, uh, the uh, water from the San Francisco River Basin toward the Northeast, et cetera. So we, ha we, are, we have a number of strategic initiatives, uh, very important. And the coordination of these initiatives were uh, uh, involved more than 500 high-ranking uh, public uh, servants. Uh, uh, we at BNDS uh, um, engaged a high-quality team to support the policy. We had a number of uh, meetings every week many, many, many meetings in all of those uh, initiatives, no? in, in with a clearly defined responsibilities. No? And uh, at the top, a coordination of the uh, chief of staff of the presidency, the finance minister, and I should tell you that the role <laughs> of our finance minister was very important in many of those initiatives, it is, uh, entirely different when you have development and you have uh, your finance minister helping you to in develop an initiative. Now, uh, normally a finance minister is very not very open to supporting development initiatives. So we had to develop our finance minister, our planning, education ministry. So there was a, a top coordination, but it was not just a top down we had also a, a, a bottom-up initiative in which you have a massive coordination through 
uh, many different committees for pushing forward. I will not talk about BNDS. BNDS was important. It is a big bank now. Um, we are very efficient institution for our size. Um, uh, we now are almost the same size of, uh, of the World Bank in terms of assets. Our assets position in equity there is book value. If I, if I mark it in market value, we would be uh, almost, uh, we'll be the same size of the World Bank in assets. In disbursement, we, we are uh, much uh, uh, bigger than uh, the World Bank or IDB. We are a big bank. We operate a number of direct operations, indirect operations through the banking system. We finance small and medium firms, and we have a, a nice product, which is a credit card for small firms, very successful. We, we also support ec uh, export operations, project financing for infrastructure. We have an investment bank inside for equity investment, et cetera. And we do all that with a very low non-performing ratio, very low ratio of delinquency. So very efficient institution, thanks God. It, it is highly professional and um, I'm very, uh, uh, I could not, we could not have done it without having a, such a high quality institution, which is an asset for Brazil to have. Uh, we, we can see here that as, if we look at the column from 2006, in 2006, the capital market was providing an important portion of, uh, of capital formation in Brazil. And as the crisis came, the private markets contracted. BNDS now, uh, was uh, last year represented almost 40% of the financing of capital formation, retained earnings, 43.6%. Uh, so main supports for capital formation, BNDS and retained earnings. And now our challenge is how to stimulate the market, the private, the capital markets and the credit market to share the burden with us. So we are already too big. We don't want BNDS to get even bigger. So we wish to crowd in and we're doing a uh, very intense effort of coordination with the, with the uh, private sector in order to, to do that. Uh, uh, we expect to be about the same size as this year. Um, uh, we have a portfolio of approved loans which amount for 88 billion US dollar, so they're outstanding. And uh, we are uh, uh, pretty uh, big. So just to finish, um, Brazil has now a, uh, a bright perspective to the future. Of course, it's not guaranteed. We have, to, <coughs> we have to keep on improving our fundamentals. We have to, to have reforms to face. Uh, but we have basic fundamentals which are, are there. A emerging middle class, I didn't show but Brazil now has a new middle class, uh, improvement of income. We ha I had a slide which is uh, there, uh, very interesting. This presentation has a background of information that will be available for you that I'm not showing here, otherwise I would spend one hour and take on time. We have important drivers of inf And we have also, I didn't mention, but large scale events like the World Cup and the Olympic Games in 2016, which is also a driver of investment and, uh, and also of uh, mobilizing uh, 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 management capabilities for the public sector. So that's all nice opportunities. No? So I will stop here. We have, I could speak a bit more, but we, I, I'll stop here and take some questions and apologize for, for speaking too much. Uh, and uh, I think prefer to take it. Thank you so much for your attention. Great. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I'll ask uh, Fred, can you, Fred Warner from the Brazil-US Business Council will 
uh, help us with uh, Q&A and uh, please identify yourselves and uh, keep it short. Good. Uh, first, Dr. Coutinho, thank you very much for a very interesting and informative presentation. Um, I think as you started the presentation, you talked about uh, developing economies uh, really leading global growth. And there's no doubt during the course of the presentation that it's uh, your vision and strategy about technology, innovation, and sustainability are a key that makes Brazil the leader in that. So again, thank you very much and for the informative presentation. We do have about uh, 10 minutes for, uh, for questions uh, for, for doctors. So if, uh, if we could, ma'am. IMF. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Coutinho, for a very interesting presentation. I have a basic question. Uh, where are the savings for this increased investment efforts going to come from? I I where are the savings? The national savings. National savings. I mean, how do you see the role of foreign savings, national domestic savings, and, and within the domestic savings, the private and the, and the public sector? And what are really uh, the challenges that this poses for instance, for the future Minister of Finance in, uh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, in uh, mobilizing the um, uh, public sector part of the savings. Let's not comment about uh, your, your point, uh, but <laughs> about, uh, I'm very happy at BNGS, and uh, I think, uh, uh, Yeah, wish to, be, yeah. I, I, um, we do have a challenge of improving our domestic savings ratio, um, and we have to do it through many channels. Uh, we have to improve uh, public savings, and that calls for uh, supporting uh, social security savings in, in, in the social security system. Uh, that mean this is a broad agenda, uh, not just for the public and also for the private sector. I, it is important for creating long-term savings for the public, for the private system, for the private banking system also on the other side. We do have a uh, agenda of, um, of um, also developing um, um, insurance sector and other forms of institu institutional savers, institutional saving, which is uh, very important for. Uh, the reason for that, that we need to have a more, a normal, sophisticated uh, uh, financial intermediation system and banking that's able to convert uh, savings into long-term finance for investment in reais, in do from domestic sources. Um, of course, BNDS is doing uh, whatever it can to support investment, and if we key for uh, maintaining growth with stability, uh, um, a key condition for that is uh, increase investment and create supply, create capacity ahead of demand. Uh, this uh, requires uh, um, that investment, investment ratio to GDP uh, uh, climb to towards uh, 23, 24 percent. So we'd have to add more investment each year and finance it. Um, uh, and of course, the main source of finance is uh, retained earnings. It's everywhere. In Brazil, is also important. Uh, there is the NGS that will keep on uh, uh, having an important role, and we have to stimulate, we have to create conditions for the private banking and for the capital markets to crowd in and to, to, to support also investment. I'm more optimistic in the short run that the capital markets could do it, could do important uh, capital markets, and that's why the agenda for uh, supporting the development of the Brazilian capital market is a very important agenda. Um, of course, uh, part of the savings will come from 
foreign savings, from external sources of savings. This is not nothing wrong with it, unless if you feel depend too much on that. I remember very uh, clearly when I was a, a young professor that the Brazilian cycle in the 70s, the scaling up of investment was mainly, f mainly financed from the inflow of large foreign loans. And that created the scenario for the debt crisis thereafter. No? And that if you rely too much on foreign credit or foreign capital markets, you make yourself vulnerable to, to swings. Uh, so you should be moderate no, uh, in your, in, and should keep an eye on the current account deficit and not let it expand too much. So this is uh, uh, a, a, a very, um, uh, you know, a reasonable thing to, to do. But of course, the, the, the how to manage uh, and how to, to do it, it's another story uh, that has to do with reforming, has to do with institutional building, in institutional development, in taking a number of, of concerted initiatives. Uh, we having uh, this dialogue with the Brazilian private banking and, pr and capital market institution towards reinforcing the agenda of, of savings, of domestic savings. But I, uh, of course, I, uh, it is a big challenge. And uh, that's the reason why I say the future is not guaranteed for Brazil if we don't do our homework. We have, this is a part, important part of the homework to be done in order to achieve sustainable growth. But I think if we have a clear vision and if it's not, this is not, all of uh, I am saying is not a polemical issue in Brazil. So I mean, there is a fairly large uh, support among uh, economists, among uh, public opinion makers, and politicians, etc., that this is a agenda to be uh, to be uh, conquered. So I, I don't see it's a, uh, that's not it's a feasible agenda you know, for the future. Good. Another question, Pam, right in the back. Um, my name is Marisa. I'm uh, with Amazon Watch. Um, my question is about the uh, Belo Monte Dam. Could you speak louder? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> my question is about the uh, Belo Monte Dam. Uh, Benny Bessi has announced that it will fund up to 80% of the hydroelectric dam. Um, the project, however, has been highly criticized for its uh, massive social and environmental impacts. Um, it has also been argued that uh, the project is actually inefficient in terms of the amount of energy it will generate. Uh, there are also like several other issues that civil society organizations and um, academics have raised. Um, my question is, uh, in the decision of uh, funding uh, this project, how has uh, the bank considered uh, these um, human rights and environmental issues? You're talking about Belo Monte, Belo Monte project, Monte. yeah. Well, <coughs> um, first, uh, Belo Monte, went through a long discussion at the uh, environmental uh, licensing authorities and ministry of uh, the environment. Um, the, pro the project has been, uh, has been uh, redesigned many times in order to optimize and to have it in a, in a minimize uh, the impact. Um, also, uh, the project budget was increased uh, extra more than f almost four billion reais to account for and remedy the uh, the impact of of the of the uh, of the environment, social and the environmental effects of the of the. And uh, another important point is that the area was o already a, it, it was not a virgin area in the forest. It is already a highly degraded area in which you already had, uh, particularly in one large portion of it, you already had a, a, a almost complete deforestation of the area. 
the project has also been uh, uh, the lake. The lakes were also redesigned to be very small. So the efficiency of Belo Monte is comparable to a small power hydropower plant. Uh, the ratio between energy generated and the size of the reservoir, of a water reservoir, is the same. It's even better than a small power, a small hydropower plant. So it is an efficient project. All the safeguards uh, were taken. Uh, the population will be assisted. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, sure that the lives of the population will be much better after the project rather than now. Uh, we are taking care of it because we do not uh, support any project at all that do, do not address the social and environmental impacts around it, in its surrounding. So the bank, uh, of course, the bank is not the environmental authority. Uh, we, we, we don't have the authority to say. We have to wait for the environmental authority. So, but we are comfortable with the project. The project has been discussed for years. It went through many, many discussions, many, many improvements, and it's been approved by in all the, uh, in the, in all the, the forums, that would, uh, in all the authorities. And uh, Brazil needs its energy. The alternative to Belo Monte would be um, creating a number, a very large number of um, of um, uh, other uh, thermal plants that would uh, have to burn coal instead. So uh, there is, uh, we have to think about the alternatives. Uh, and uh, of course, it's 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 very nice to say let's let's substitute it for solar for wind. Of course, wind and solar are very nice, but they do not generate large amounts of energy. You have to do, you, you know, it it will in any place will be an important part of the, of energy metrics in Brazil, but in any case, will not it cannot be more than four or five percent, even if you cover the whole Brazil with uh, wind power uh, things. So it is, it is, Brazil has a very clean energy matrix and um, we're not, we're not, uh, uh, Belo Monte is being dramatized, um, but it is a sound project. We're not, we're not uh, at all uh, uh, worried about the consistency of, of the project in, in, the, uh, in this respect. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Delmy here. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jack. You came to speak here today on the environmental issues. Uh, Ms. Young, can you say something about pre-salt, the role that Belo Monte may be playing in the development of those resources? Pre-salt. Pre-salt. Mm -hmm. uh, petroleum uh, prospects and, and the potential for the change of the uh, Yeah, well, uh, first, pre-salt two challenges. One is, uh, Petrobras need a capitalization operation in order to face the responsibilities for in increasing the scale of investment uh, given the uh, perspective of pre-salt. This capitalization will take place this September. Uh, it was postponed from July to September because the authority, there is a critical assessment of the value of the barrel uh, uh, in deep seated uh, and pre salt, and that has to be done in a, through an international search uh, uh, ex expert. Uh, and uh, Petrobras hired its own expert firm, but it, it you know, of course cannot, it's an obvious conflict of interest. Then the government asked us to hire, but the, the, the right thing to do is not, was the agency, the, the legal authority to assess is the Brazilian uh, uh, National Oil Agency. Um, and this agency, uh, uh, given the bureaucratic difficulties of 
one law very known in Brazil, the law 8666, mm -hmm. you know, 8666, which is a law. Then uh, the, uh, the, the agency uh, finally uh, hired a, a assessment and will be ready by August. And then uh, the assessment of the values will be there to make the capitalization operation uh, viable. I cannot speak about that. I'm just reporting what is on the press because being a member of the uh, Council of uh, Petrobras, I have silent period. I cannot comment on the substance. I'm just saying that the what Petrobras has already informed to the market. But this is an important, uh, important uh, step. The second step are the um, um, innovation in, uh, um, because uh, extracting and processing oil in, uh, in at this distance from the coast, et cetera, requires incremental and requires substantial innovation in many fields. So we have innovation to face. And now we have extra challenges uh, for uh, increasing the safeguards and the uh, 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 requirements for, for safety in the whole, uh, uh, the whole uh, process. So it is, uh, now, uh, part of that is translated in a massive program in which we will have to develop a supply chain. One of the missions of BNDS is just to support the development in Brazil of a large supply chain of equipment, engineering, and, uh, and services, uh, given the fact that Brazil has a diversified manufacturing and services and engineering s system it would not be uh, reasonable to import everything, so we have to develop on our own. We wish to attract foreign capital, we wish to attract partnerships, uh, and we wish to develop a, a, a competitive supply base for, for uh, supplying uh, the investments by Petrobras. So this is also a big challenge, a policy challenge that need, uh, is facing us. But we are feeling a tremendous interest in that. You know? uh, um, there is uh, uh, a very uh, uh, substantial uh, uh, interest in uh, by, by foreign suppliers, particularly uh, offshore services and uh, equipment sectors of mature economies that have already gone through their cycles that are now eager to supply to Brazil. So I don't see this as an insurmountable uh, 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 challenge. We can also partner those initiatives with the Brazilian indigenous capabilities in the capital goods sectors, et cetera. So we have a nice frontier of investment opportunities, which is not Petrobras. It's just what's behind it, which is the whole industry behind it, which is a very nice. Uh, uh, opportunity. Thank you. We have one more question between that's uh, keeping us from the reception. So, ma'am, please. <laughs> Last question. I'll be brief. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation, Dr. Cochin. Um, you mentioned in the Q and A uh, the insurance sector, and my question relates to the proposal that's been um, floated to have some sort of a, a state-owned. Uh, insurance entity, uh, and I was wondering if you could share with us your insights as to uh, the, the motivation behind that and the scope and how you see that proposal potentially going forward. Thank you. Um, I think um, maybe the intention of, of uh, has been misunderstood. There is no intention of, of the Brazilian government to create a insurance, uh, state insurance firm that will preempt or compete with the private sector. What we have is that we have very large projects to face. And, in, and there is a area of insurance, particularly uh, that is not covered by any kind of insurance. And so there's areas of risk, regulatory risk, 
risks from, from uh, not a, v a very clear origin. You, know? you have uh, coverage of risk uh, through performance bonds and through complete completion bonds that define in a very clear way what's, the, what's being secured by, by the operation. But in many cases, you have uh, other uncertain factors that have to be, that would have to be covered also. Think about a, a, a project uh, that uh, uh, it, it is of a 12 to $13 billion in loan. Uh, think about uh, any bank not just BNDS, a, a, a bank that it is supplying credit for very large project, and if by any chance there is a misfortune, and a, 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 a would hit its balance sheet. So very large project financing, a project financing that's not something that can be supported by the balance sheet of, of the entrepreneurs, but it ha can hardly also be supported by the balance sheet of the banking system that's behind it if it's too big. So the existence of a, a, guarantee, a fund that guarantee, help to guarantee the project, I it is a positive thing uh, that will not um, um, uh, crowd out uh, the normal functioning of the insurance uh, sector. <coughs> and uh, maybe the, the way it was written may have created some misunderstanding, uh, but the Minister uh, Mantega has announced yesterday that the creation of the insurance, of this guarantee uh, 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 f um, institution will be made through a, a normal law uh, initiative that will be discussed in the Congress. There will be plenty of room for uh, discussing all the details and making it clear that the intention. Um, um, if you recall, in Asia, there are some, <coughs> in Japan, in Korea, there are their, their guarantee in insurance companies by the state that supply this form of guarantee in combination with the private sector. That, that's the intention. That's, it's not to, it, it is to provide guarantees. And those already exist in a, in a way because the Brazilian state has developed a fund for PPPs, another fund for the um, uh, shipbuildings, large project for shipbuildings area, another fund for energy projects. So the idea of lumping together all those funds in one big fund that would um, diversify risk and be more efficient in utilizing public uh, uh, resources uh, for facing large projects. But uh, the idea, uh, there is no, uh, no, no intention at all to, to uh, occupy or to preempt the space of the, of the insurance industry. No? So I'm, I'm very, uh, uh, but it is, it, it is something needed for, given the size and scale of the project financing. And also, uh, I, um, frankly speaking, the appetite for taking risk in big project financing is not by private banks, even large banks, is not very, uh, not there right now. So it, it make, uh, it uh, overburdens our, our, uh, our duty to support those, those large projects. So we ourselves will be a user of this guarantee. I, w I would wish to protect balance sheet of my bank, which is an efficient bank, uh, by a, a, a support of a guarantee fund covering uh, uh, the forms of risks which are not clearly identified. If you go, if you buy an insurance, you will see that the insurer 
insurance clauses are very uh, well specified into detail, and they only cover what is clearly and evidently specified in that detail. Every, every, everything else is not covered. So insurance is a very, very, uh, has its, its complexity. So <laughs> I would wish to have, so for everything else which is not clearly covered by private insurance, I would like to have a coverage of a guarantee by a public institution for a large product. That's how our, from our point of view, uh, uh, that's the main reason I think this is, a, this could be a, 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 an interesting ins uh, instrument for, for, for policy, for, the, for, for projects. Great, thank you, I'm Dr. Sorry. Pacino. I'm gonna turn it over to Paolo. Well, thank you, Fred. Uh, before uh, we uh, break for a reception to which you are all invited across the hall, I wanted to make a couple of remarks or just uh, uh, Professor Luciano Gortino just helped us do once again something that we do all the time at the Wilson Center. We try to, and I think, uh, uh, to produce dialogue, discussions, and produce light, not heat, that people get out of here informed, uh, better prepared to understand public policy, to make public policy. And I thank you very much for helping us. Uh, 